Stuck with you? What the hell you mean? This is a good thing. <laughs> I figure I gotta do one with you all season, you know? Yeah, at some point. Yeah, of course you save it till the end, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. How you been? Ah, you know, same old, same old. Life in New York yeah. is never ending, yeah. never stops. And How have the watch parties been going? Decently well, all things considered. Uh, yeah. Turnouts, you know, 20, 30 people per event, uh -huh. which given regular season and given weekdays, not yeah. not too bad. Yeah, yep, yep. How's everything on your guys' side? Other than the game, obviously. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's all right. We're moving forward. I mean, I think, like, these guys, it's expect the unexpected, right? So we just, like, get a, you, it, that's been the whole season, I think. Uh, so it was a little bit of today, too. I feel like today was gettable, but, you know, I have silver eyes. Our coaches and players know what they're doing, so I trust them. <clears throat> It was, not going to lie, a little tough to watch Dokla's face. They focused on him a lot during the player Random camps, like attack. between yeah. games and then in the post -time. Like he, yeah. he seemed like he was kind of not struggling mentally. That's not the right. Like he was just aggravated. Yeah. I mean, he tends to like, he tends to, to look, look, I don't know if you want to talk about it on the record, off the record. He tends to look that way, but he's, he's solid. Like, you know, I think uh, that's why I don't always love those like uh, in between cameras because you don't you get to see him right as it reacts to the loss and you get to see us like when we're talking about like draft prep and like what we're working on for the next phase and like you know it's a stressful time right you're thinking about what you did wrong how you can improve but you you know lcs doesn't the broadcast doesn't necessarily capture like you walking back to stage right and it doesn't always capture like the moment that he's back on stage and you know i think uh the facial expressions and everything like he's he was like that all each best of five we had last year and he's been solid so and i think he was solid in these games today i think we all have something to take away and learn from them and we could have been better on the day but you know i i, I have faith in all of them yeah I use the word. <laughs> uh just for context everything from this point is on record i'll mention when okay. we're off camera later because there are a few <laughs> things that i want to ask you about uh privately yeah. yeah sure i'm in a all fairly open book <laughs> I believe me, I know that. Uh, yeah. I don't want to focus too much on the games today because you guys have another game against EG later. I do, like yeah. it's not worth honestly going into everything there. For I do sure. want to talk to you about the bigger, the bigger macro of LCS. Mm -hmm. We talked about it a bit at Worlds because the news broke whenever you and I were at the watch parties there. How would you, as somebody that's on the org side, deem weekdays at the LCS? starting with the banger um i think it's a little early right i think uh we haven't we haven't as all the teams and as a league i think sat down and gone through all the data and like i think you knowing me um that's the stuff that i really care about and i want to see right i think we so far um we've seen a couple of weeks but we haven't seen the full season and i think most importantly like we haven't seen the full run of playoffs because i think playoffs will give us the best apples to apples comparison of like how is league health compared to last year without all the noise of going to weekday um but it's been interesting i think thus far this split um at least for me just experience yeah because i'm in new york sometimes and i'm yeah. here other times like experience from new york the games are actually like watchable for me on the east coast i'm not staying up forever which i'm sure you appreciate appreciate in la it's it's just kind of different right especially like as someone who works at an org like my thursday and friday afternoons are just like gone from a working perspective right and like we're just with the team we're navigating coming to lcs probably the worst aspect of it i tweeted about it earlier this year is that uh driving back to culver city after oh yeah weekday la traffic's been awful um but i don't know i i think like to candidly answer your question i think it's too early to say i think uh it seems like viewership's a little bit lower and i haven't heard the league uh, the league hasn't like uh, sent us the viewership for the last couple of weeks, but I'm waiting to see playoffs. Uh, I'm waiting to see like what the league thinks and what the hypotheses are, and we'll kind of go from there. Because I think it was interesting, right? Initially, this was there was a hypothesis around 12 o'clock. We shifted it to two o'clock. I'm sure like that wasn't ideal from like the full shift, right? Going full bore into yeah. whatever Riot was thinking about it, and so like I don't know how much we think we lose splitting the difference. Um, I think the league is kind of adapting on a strategy basis on like how to market around um, the weekday stuff. Um, but on the positive side, I would say like, you know, I think we're trying things and doing things in broadcast that are like are refreshing, continue to oh be my refreshing, God, yeah. right? 
Like, I think some of the stuff that we're doing on broadcast in terms of the segments, in terms of, like, we've always done features, but the creativity behind the scenes, I think that's as good as the league has ever been. I mean, I think they're trying some new stuff that I wish they had been trying, like, you know, three, four years ago. But, you know, we'll take it now. And I think particularly on the team side, like, you know, it, it's on us to continue to figure out how to continue to, you know, improve on how we tell player stories, build their personas, et cetera. Um, and I think fan, you know, I think we, I, I think we're also lucky to have certain fans and people in the space like yourself, like, um, like Numi and all these CLG yeah. fans all the time. Like, you know, I'm very grateful for that. Anytime we have that, because I think the fans are what are our lifeblood and they keep us going. So I think we just have to continue to capitalize that and make sure this thing keeps rolling and gets some momentum. I know I asked you about this before, and I'm curious if your opinion has changed at all. Do you think it's beneficial to be on the road outside of LA more than just twice a year? Uh, I know that's obviously way harder now that we're on weekdays. It's not a yeah. combo that works well, but yeah, I think it's safe to say now that now that I'm like six years removed from working at Ryder, however long it is, like it's something that like was at one time like talked about talked about in a brainstorming meeting right i mean like I don't, I don't think it ever got to a serious point um but i think the trickiness to me is just like you know what is what does that do and like what does that do for our product and like as a league what are our goals right in theory like the golden standard has always been like average minute audience right so if you evaluate the cost of doing these road shows more periodically across all these venues you know, flying all the teams out there. Like, I don't want to pay for that. Like, right. <laughs> right? Flying the teams out, um, flying like all the equipment that they have out. Cause like a lot of the stuff that you see in the arena is like brought out from LA, like the cost of that adds up quickly. Um, so how do you want to weigh that and the operational cost of us flying all over the place against like the, the, what will help partnership sell for the LCS, right? Cause for better or worse, like for us, for par for for the league, like partnerships still rule the day. Like we don't get to have gate money and media rights in the same way that traditional sports do. So I like the idea and concept. Whoops, sorry. But in practice, I think uh, I don't know if the cost benefit is there. I don't like. I'm sure someone at Riot somewhere has like done the analysis the last time we talked and thought about regionalization. Um, I do think it's like take us for example i do think it's possible to do more in like cities around the world and like doing more watch parties i think pre-pandemic clg did used to do more watch parties in new york um but you know i think the elephant in the room is that it's it's tricky for all orgs right now and even me right like i have i have all my staff in los angeles even though i have the garden in new york it hasn't exactly been easy just like spinning something up in the city i think yeah. like we could certainly do a better job prioritizing it and thinking about it, but um, for like all 10 teams of this league with their differing levels of investment in League of Legends and affiliations to local regions, I don't know, it's kind of hard. Like it's one of those things where no one's stopping us now, but maybe a kick in the pants or an opportunity from Riot would help us do more. I don't really know the answer to that question, but it's something I've thought about. Well, you kind of hinted at it a little bit that we're missing the majority of the revenue opportunities that exist in traditional sports versus esports. We have sponsorships, we have no media rights, we have no ticket sales, merchandising is minimal at best. You're not you're not gaining any sort of additional revenue streams under the current model. And yeah, I guess I mean, the the problem solving <laughs> Yeah, I it Parth brought it up today on Twitter. I'm not sure if you saw the thread that's been going around that he posted. But he, uh, I don't think I saw yet, but he's a smart guy. He basically he came at, or he retweeted Portillo's tweet about players needing to do more content and engaging and basically went at the org saying $300,000 $300, average salary when we're not driving any revenue. Yeah. What What's going on here? So the, the pushback that I would have on that model or the, the like the traveling question, but just a guess a broader question is what are we doing to open up new revenue streams? Because clearly sponsorships, are, and apparel from individual teams are not going to be enough to sustain this long term. Well, I think the tricky thing, and like, I think the tricky thing, and like, you know, I'm biased here. I'm on the York side, right? Um, but I care about the ecosystem, and obviously, I care a lot about players. Is that it's not it's not just like you know, there's two sides to the equation, right? It's cost side and it's revenue side. On the revenue side, I think the teams that have diversified their businesses, like you take a look at the classic ones, right? Like TSM Blitz um, or whatever you want to say about 
you know, what 100 Thieves is doing with like Juvie and the and the game and and like investing in the high ground. I think those are probably like the earlier things that we see in terms of like trying to create new revenue streams. I think the other issue we have on the other side is just sort of, <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say issue, but the reality of our ecosystem is like player costs have been pretty high, right? Like part of yeah. the people on Twitter don't like, you know, um, are like, you know, they're not lying about that. Um, and I think uh, it's a collective responsibility of the teams. Like, I think as long as there's someone willing to spend at the top and a couple of teams that want to compete to win and have branding through winning, like, um, you know, I, I think some of that will exist, and I think that makes it hard to balance the sheets. But, you know, I think that's kind of why we, over the course of the last couple of years, like, you know, we've had more budget in the tank than, like, we've actually spent, but we did, we do, did, and continue to believe that, you know, we can take talent, like, a slightly more domestic talent, slightly younger talent, slightly more unproven, unproven talent, surround them with, like, a really good structure, a really good organization, and some very talented coaches, like, you know, I yeah. Every every CEO or whatever is going to say I have the co best coaching staff in the league, right? But I wouldn't trade these guys for everyone, like yeah. for anyone. They all bring something to the table. They're all great human beings. They all care. Um, like I I think like we just haven't really tested that that much, right? Like how many teams have actually taken a go at the middle ground, right? Like you've certainly had botting scraping teams that are just like okay, we're just not going to spend anything on LCS, right? And you've had teams who are willing to spend to win. Um, I think you've had teams who've experimented in both directions, and I think you have teams who have just like the benefit of a really great system, like the way C9 does, as we see every year. Um, but you know, uh, of the teams looking from the outside in, and like of the teams that are like <clears throat> vying for the top, I don't know that anyone's exactly followed in our footsteps. Um, I think EG, like when I was there and, and since I left, has shown what happens if you combine that with premium spending, right? And that's why they go to Worlds and that's why they want Spring LCS. But um, I don't know. I think my path is more stressful, but I wouldn't trade it for anything because, um, you know, we index a lot on personality, character, effort, and, and our staff. Uh, so I think that's worked for us. But this is all a long way of saying, like, you know, I, I don't think teams have, I don't know if teams have, I think teams are starting to react now. Right. I yeah. think we've spent a lot for a long time. There's always been like one or two teams in the room who've like blown it open. And I think I haven't really looked at the numbers, but maybe last year, or this year was the first time that like the average salary came down. And um, I don't know. I think like uh, I wonder what it would have been like if we started sustainably, su sustainably from the beginning. Right. I mean, there are a lot of what it could have should have. Yeah. That like, that's the, I feel like the conversation gets lost a lot in what could have happened, you know, 2018, 2019, when all the money did start pouring in. And now like, it's like, yeah, now it, it's while it's important to look back and reflect, it's yeah. equally more equally, if not more so important to look forward. And how are we going to fix this? How are we going to make this a sustainable business over the long term so that we all like you have jobs going forward those of us that want to eventually work our way into the industry have jobs at some point like it's a sustainable career that we can try and work towards at some point yeah i hate like the um, it's a strong word i think i think i agree with you i think looking backward isn't always healthy right like you know everyone in this ecosystem from teams to players to riot like there were opportunities to do things differently back then like i still i still love like i still have loved and do love the lcs um but i think like i also think there's no point in like pointing at things and saying oh my god like esports winner we saw this coming we told you to like pr prepare for the worst like yeah i mean i think it's it's sometimes difficult on the team side right and i think you know uh different teams are going to face what's going on out in the market and what's available in terms of partnership dollars differently um i think like you know i think the contraction of spending i think the potential merger of teams i think all the stuff that's going out like there like it's it's gonna it is happening and it's yeah. gonna happen like we've lost some really great stuff over the last couple of years right i think um, you know, beyond the summit, shuddering after this mesh summit that's going on right now. Um, God, esports e engines. Uh, yeah, esports engines acquisition. Uh, the layoffs that have happened across our industry, like it's all, it's all quite unfortunate. Um, 
and you know i still believe in esports long term it's still like you know the industry of my choice and i think just sort of as as we all deal with all these changes i think it's on us collectively to to figure out you know how to chart that path forward right like you know we had this period of explosive explosive growth i think we all took our cuts at what our hypothesis of what you know a team business model could be um but you know during this bridge period i think it's all about us rallying together um making sure that the, the people who care about the space have a have an area to you know display their fandom and display their investment and um you know for us it's it's interesting right it's a mix of supporting our players and just trying to let them go out and do their thing but it's also uh continuing to find a good way to tell that story uh and and create something special that you know will hopefully outlive my my time with clg with like you know you know things things times and people change right uh but i think i'm grateful to work for an org that just like has that legacy in league of legends you know last thing i got for you all on the record yeah you're sitting third in the eastern conference right now with the knicks nba i think we're fourth Hi. or fifth did something happen uh i'm looking i'm pulling it up right now i got milwaukee boston ahead of you and then uh philly at 49 wins i don't think we were that good let's see we're at fifth. boston we're at philly milwaukee, milwaukee boston, philly cleveland and us so I we're two get two games ahead or like what a game and a half ahead of miami we're on like a three game losing streak which is kind of tough i mean i think these guys are going to avoid the play in i would boy i would really love to avoid milwaukee or philadelphia in the playoffs i think i would prefer to see cleveland or boston um but i how, cut you off what how far do you well it's just how far do you think they can go like even if you avoid milwaukee and boston early on like how far do you realistically think they can make a run in the playoffs the secret and the bane of my existence is that i feel very similarly about us in league of legends as i do with the knicks right like i think i think they can certainly they have a chance to get out of the first round depending on who they play against um and i don't think like i don't think teams want to play us i don't think teams want to see us like i think we have uh, a bunch of young talent that's like coalescing together i think we have young guys who are coming into their prime um and i think like we've taken games off of all the top teams in the league and we've shown that we can do it uh so i wouldn't count us out of anything and i think everything i just said also applies to clg so i'm optimistic on both fronts love the similarities between the yeah. two yeah i know i you know what what fion did uh nba comp like what are all the nba teams in the lcs or what are the comparables i'm like how are you calling us anything but the <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a shoo-in it really yeah. is it's, it's like, like the easiest you know, we were like a premier brand we were a premier brand we were shitty for a time like we can't we clawed our way back and like um we can beat anyone on a good day we can also lose to anyone on a bad day so um i don't know i'm hopeful there i think the rangers are also solid i'm i'm excited i think this will be i haven't actually looked at this stat but i think this is the first time all knicks rangers and clg will be in playoffs at the same time since whenever because like we haven't made a spring playoff since 2017 and that was before the acquisition so don't remind That's me of the rangers right now they just kicked the penguins ass so bad in two games this past week that i don't yeah. want to took one off carolina yesterday so i hope they can keep it up i it's mean nice. i mean <laughs> we'll see i need to try and get out to a game though i really do we went we tried to go to the penguins rangers game uh the first one of uh -huh. the or the first one last week and tickets yeah. jumped up to like 300 it's like nah yeah. it's those guys are rolling it's a good it's a hot ticket in town so it is I mean, that's, uh, good for the parent company so that makes me happy yeah uh thanks everybody on youtube who's tuning in i'm gonna cut it off here hope you'll have a good one and make sure to watch clg face off against uh evil geniuses on sunday personal grudge match my old org oh boy here we go <laughs>